We got a big show for you tonight. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Now, big day here in the Big Apple. Uh, Donald Trump has come back to New York, and New Yorkers were, were really happy to see him. New York is you. New York is you. Now, now, to be fair, that is a standard New York greeting. <laughs> now, here's a, you might remember, uh, it took Donald Trump two days to condemn the white nationalists and the neo-Nazis who held that rally down in Charlottesville. That's, uh, that's why, I know, yeah. I, I know the feeling. And that's why I sent him this card. Happy belated c c condemnation <laughs> I can't believe we did not see you condemn them sooner. Fresh ink. That's fresh ink. But... Even though uh, many criticized how long it took, the president knew the right thing was to make a statement on Monday, be clear about who was to blame, and then move on to the people's business. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he held a press conference today in, I believe, the seventh circle of hell. Here's what he said when asked why he waited two days to condemn neo-Nazis and white supremacists in Charlottesville. When I make a statement, I like to be correct. Before I make a statement, I like to know the facts. Before I make a statement, I need the facts. Okay, I wait for the facts, okay? <laughs> Just ask the millions of illegal voters who refused to look for Obama's birth certificate during my record-breaking inauguration, okay? <laughs> it's all on the Obama wiretaps. It's all there. That's what I'm... That's what I'm... And he was still very angry about how the press covered his initial statement on Saturday. If the press were not fake and if it was honest, the press would have said what I said was very nice. And if you were a better president, you would have said something very nice. <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> Hypotheticals are fun. Yeah. If wishes and butts were clusters of nuts, we'd all have a bowl of granola. <laughs> and when the president was asked about his embattled strategist, Steve Bannon, he gave him this vote of something. I like him. He's a good man. Uh, he is not a racist, I can tell you that. If the third thing... <laughs> if the third thing someone says about you unprompted... <laughs> is he's not a racist? You got a problem. Oh, you'd love Jeff. He's nice, he's good-looking, not a necrophiliac, I can tell you that. But... Just take a cold bath, lie still. But... It kept coming back to Charlottesville, and once again, Donald Trump wasn't fully sure whether the Nazis should get all the blame. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other, but there is another side. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. The only thing I'm doubting right now is whether you're still going to be president by Friday. Because... What the hell are you talking about? You know, one side hates minorities, the other side hates people who hate minorities. Okay, two sides, all right? It's just like D-Day. Remember, D-Day, two sides, allies and the Nazis. There was a lot of violence on both sides, okay? <laughs> Ruined a beautiful beach. And could have been a golf course. Could have, could have, been, a, could have been a great sand trap. And when reporters asked the president about the white supremacist alt-right, Trump quickly turned the tables. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? First of all, sir, the opposite of alt-right isn't the alt-left. <laughs> it's the not-Nazis. <laughs> but... 
But he was quick to point out that not everybody in the crowd were neo-Nazis. All of those people, excuse me, I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups, but not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists. That's right. Uh, some of them were anti-Semites. It was very diverse. <laughs> and Trump challenged the media to be fair. Take a look the night before. They were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. OK, uh, the night before. Let's take a look at the night before. Yep, just your average, friendly, civic-minded, torch-wielding mob, you know, probably holding the torches so everyone could see them point out all the good people there. There's one. There's one over there. There's a good guy. Look at that guy right there. He's a good one. Hey! That's what they were doing. Trump also pointed out that nothing, that uh, not honoring the Confederacy is a slippery slope. This week, it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? OK, Self, uh, where does it stop? I'm going to say it stops at the people who tried to destroy the country that George Washington and Thomas Jefferson founded. But I'm just spitballing. I'm just, that's just me. I think you got it. No, I don't know. I think Let's you got fair. it. No. Let's be fair, John. You, I think you, you got gotta it. You got to be fair, John. No, that's pretty fair. Then <laughs> Trump continued to attack, and I can't believe I'm saying this, George Washington. George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? Yes, so will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? Spoken like a guy who's suspiciously worried that racist presidents don't get statues anymore. <laughs> and are we going to, what do I, do I get one? Does I look bad? And George Washington wasn't the only founding father Trump could name. How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? OK, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Oh, yeah, major slave owner, easily in the top five slave owners. Yeah, <laughs> it goes Jefferson, Washington, Madison, Jabba the Hutt, uh, Ivanka's clothing line. There are a lot of them. And I think I'm not, I think so. I think so. If I'm wrong, I'm joking, obviously. And uh, he had some more to say about Jefferson. He was a major slave owner. Now, we're going to take down his statue. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. Yes, taking down a statue is totally changing history, because the main way anybody learns about history is through statue-based study. <laughs> That's why we know that Abraham Lincoln was 20 feet tall and loved sitting down. <laughs> That's really all he did. That's all he was known for. <laughs> That's my Lincoln. That's my Lincoln. And Trump, oh, Lord, help our country. Trump had this defense of the white nationalists protesting in Charlottesville. I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. You, no, wait, no, come on. Folks, you got to give it to the Nazis. They always do their paperwork. OK, very punctual, also very punctual. But Trump also reminded us about the true source of racism in this country, Barack Obama. Uh, race relations in America. And do you think things have gotten worse or better since you took office? I think they've gotten better or the same. I look, they've been frayed for a long time. And you can ask President Obama about that. Yeah, it was a mess. Back then, I remember there was one super racist guy who kept questioning if Obama was even born here. It was a terrible time. <laughs> but. It's just wrong. It's... But Trump proved he had a personal investment in Charlottesville, literally. I own actually one of the largest wineries in the United States. It's in Charlottesville. It is not one of the biggest wineries in the United States, though he is one of the biggest winers in the United States. Now, it's possible. Hey, it might He's up be there. Possible. He's in the... 
Now, remember last week? Was it just last week? Last week, we all thought that General Kelly was going to bring some order to the Trump administration. <laughs> Doesn't that feel quaint now? <laughs> yeah, sure, there's a bull in the china shop, but it'll be fine. We just hired a new china shop manager. <laughs> well, General Kelly was there to witness the whole thing. Seen here, overwhelmed <laughs> with pride. <laughs> this guy is a four-star general. Iraq, no problem. Afghanistan, we can do it. 20-minute Trump press conference, a quagmire from which our country will never emerge. What do we do? What do we do? I don't. And here's the thing. Everybody did not get great reviews. It did not get great reviews. Yeah, yeah, I... David Duke liked it. Pretty much nobody else liked this press conference. And his staff was very quick to throw the president under the bus. Oh, wow. uh, they were in damage control immediately, with one aide telling reporters, that was all him. This wasn't our plan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ours either. Uh, but <laughs> they're right. It wasn't their plan, and we know this for a fact, and this is absolutely true, because their plan was a brief written statement, and we got an actual glimpse of it when Trump pulled it out of his pocket. And it says, can we zoom in? It says, e we strongest, his egregious de bigotry, and no place in. <laughs> now, Trump never read this statement, but the Late Show's computer forensics lab has enhanced, <laughs> has enhanced the image has managed to reconstruct the other half of the page. It reads, Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to see me give the strongest argument for my impeachment yet. His egregious ramblings were nothing but bigotry and nonsense, you'll say after I finish. He has no place in the White House. That's actually... That's what he was going to say. It's what he was going to say. He should have just stuck with the plan. That's actually much more coherent than what he actually said. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Daniel Craig is here.